Let me just start first of all with the, the simple things um, uh, that we do. So the first thing, uh, there's a school in, the worst school in South Africa is called Hextark High School. It's on the edges of Bloemfontein in a semi-industrial area. And uh, I decided to take over the school um, because when I went there in last year, the school was so dysfunctional, the kids were not, the boys were wearing their ties around their heads, the, they were, you know, the kids were having you know, vicious kissing context while the classes were going on. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Um, half the teachers didn't show up. The principal uh, looked like a tzotzi. I said to him, you know, if I see you in Mimosa Mall, which is the mall there, I would, you don't even have to ask for my cell phone. I'll just give it to you. you know? um, the, uh, nobody was involved. So I went into the big hall, which is just a warehouse actually, and I said to the kids, you know what? Um, uh, it took them about half an hour to settle down because they didn't know me, so of course there's no need to respect me. And so once they settled down, I said, um, I have good news and bad news. The good news I said to these 800 kids is, you are not the problem. Um, I said, you've got an attitude problem, but I can fix that in two days. The people who are the problem is us and those teachers standing there because they don't respect you. So, I can work with you and make you a top school in South Africa, or I can leave now, I will still love you, but you'll never see me again. The kid said, whatever you do, don't leave, we'll help. The teacher said to me, forget it. They weren't sure. So I said, rule number one, the school will open at seven o'clock every morning. I start my teaching at seven sharp, and we close at five. The next morning, at half past six, the kids were there. Okay. I waited. I dressed to the nines, jacket, tie, everything, because I'm going to teach. At five to seven, I'm in the class. As the clock hit seven, I asked my first question. What is comprehension? None of them knew. Great one, what the word comprehension means. And we started to teach. Every morning since then, half past six, every one of those kids are seated. None of them leave before five o'clock. The kids will go to school if we make it worth their while to stay there. You can't tell them to go to school and police them to school. When they come there, the teacher decides to first read the Sowetan or the Ilanga or whatever the newspaper is and put her feet up and then go and take a long tea break and then go and run like most principals, a spazo shop or a taxi ride and then go and the kids will go. So, tell me teach. Every single day there's homework and mark it overnight. The next morning you get the feedback. Okay? Now, what do the kids learn? The kids are learning not that you are a hard worker. They're learning that you genuinely are interested in their futures. So I call the parents together. For those of you who think parents are, most of those parents are illiterate, never went finished high school, let alone go to high school, never finished. The parents all showed up. There was a translator next to me that evening. The parents were so excited, even before the translator went into Sasutu, they already picked up from my English that they have a responsibility and that they're excited. I gave the parents each my cell phone number. I said, you call me anytime except between 2 and 3 in the morning because that's when I sleep. Um, and they call. And they talk. And I said, what I want you to do as parents is the following. Even if you can't read or write, have your kid not come out of their room for three hours and they must show you what work they've done. Then ask them to read you a passage, a chapter from a book. And even if you don't understand it, just have that kid stand in front of you and read Okay? And the moment you feel anything is going on. So that's what you've got. So how do you change a school in system time? Number two, role model the behavior you want from the kids. So be there before they come and don't leave until they've left. It's a simple thing I learned as a beginning teacher. Number three, make sure the kids have the basic, basic resources. You can't teach them without texts. So, for example, I got Van Skyke's bookshop to give them all dictionaries. I went somewhere else to get them all. So make sure every kid has the basic textbook that they need for the subject. Because a textbook in South Africa helps two people. It helps the kids, 
but it also helps a teacher. Even though I had a BSc degree when I started to teach, I didn't know how to teach until I took four different high school biology textbooks and studied them so that I can translate my airy fairy science into teachable chunks for the kids. Okay, so make sure the basic resources are there. Then, bring in the parents. I don't care how rich or poor they are. Bring them in for simple duties of support so that you work together as a team. Okay, then always give them high expectations. I don't care how poor they are. I don't care what they've heard from other people. I give kids two messages. If you ever come to my motivational talks, I tell kids two things. One is you're smarter than you think you are. And number two, you're smarter than other people tell you you are. So just those two messages I drive day in and day out to the kids. Set the expectation high, but it's not good enough to set it high unless you give them the means to jump. Okay? Then give them something to look forward to. So every Friday, all of those kids come on a bus. I'm giving you practical things all of you can do. Every Friday, those kids come on a bus. I've got the bus company to donate it for the buses from almost three. And they come and spend three hours on campus career counseling. Do you know how many kids only come to university and then say, oh, I needed mathematics to do engineering, or I need... They don't know. Okay. So, three hours solid career counseling. Then I say to my Dean of Law last Friday, teach them about the different things in law. What does a law career look like? Don't assume the kids know. What does a career for a black kid look like in physiotherapy? Most black kids don't know about physiotherapy. I didn't know about physiotherapy. But it's a career they can choose. Optometry, etc., etc., etc. But do the simple things well. Brown um, at Wits University, friend of mine, all he does when he goes into a school, he takes any reading book for the grade and he says, read the first paragraph. And of course, most kids are going to read the first paragraph for the grade level. So what I'm saying is, do the simple things well. Make it exciting. Build incentives into the program. So I told the students, if you pass with a bachelor's pass, not just any pass, a bachelor's pass. Okay, we will get you a bursary from somewhere to study. Now they've got something to look forward to. And you don't have to do it. I, I realize I've got more opportunities to raise money than you do. Even if you just tell one kid, you know what, if you do well, I'll pay for your first textbooks in accountancy or something like that. Give them something to look forward to. Human behavior you change by mixing rewards and sanction. You change any human being, those are the two things, reward, sanction, reward, sanction. You just make sure there's not too much sanction and just make sure there's not only reward, which is what we have in South Africa, only reward and very little sanction.